Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! In other news, Theresa May is pressing on with her efforts to get her deal approved by Parliament. Prime Minister is battling to win the support of a defiant DUP while offering to quit in return for the support from her own party. MPs' alternative Brexit plans were defeated in the Commons last night, including a proposal for a customs union with the EU put forward by the Conservative veteran Ken Clark, which fell just eight votes short of a majority. Let's speak to Mr Clark now, joining us live, as you can see. Hello to you, Mr Clark. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you must have thought Pleasure. that you had this over the line. We got very near. I did suspect, and certainly uh, Oliver Letwin, who actually was presiding, as it were, set yesterday's proceedings, expected that people would plump for their one favourite course and vote against the others, and therefore practically everything would be defeated. And as you say, my proposal, which was a proposal set to maximise support, almost made it. We lost by eight votes. Now, if Theresa's withdrawal agreement gets defeated tomorrow. I hope it's not. I've always voted for her withdrawal agreement. Quite harmless. Will get us through smoothly to the serious negotiations. Then we'll have another go next Monday. I'm reasonably confident that now people have seen what the front runners are as options. Now they've seen they've got to compromise and see what they can actually deliver by joining with a broad majority of people. We we'll be able to get it through on Monday. Although the Prime Minister and the government, uh, in, indeed the leader of the House, Andrew Leadsom, has said that just because even if these indicative votes are passed, the government doesn't necessarily need to take any notice at all. I think Andrew Leadsom, or whoever said that, is raising an extremely serious constitutional crisis, if they really believe that. Uh, we always, in our modern parliamentary democracy, the government follows policies which are supported by a majority in the House of Commons. It does not pursue policies where there is no majority in the House of Commons. Uh, there, in the last couple of years, people have started inventing new kind of doctrines that motions are not legally binding and all this kind of rubbish. The fact is we live in a parliamentary democracy and everybody who's been in government knows that sometimes you have to change things or drop things because you can't get Parliament to agree. You can't get a majority in the House for that. Uh, and if the House mandates the government to negotiate the next stage on the basis we're in a permanent customs union, the government is mandated. It's in our, our constitution. It's not allowed to turn around and say, well, that's your opinion, it's not ours, and we're governing despite the wishes of the majority of the House of Commons. That would cause a major constitutional crisis if they actually believed that, as opposed to just saying it today. Uh could cause a major constitutional crisis, you say, Mr Clark. Do you not think we're already in the middle of one, or certainly a governmental one? Yes, so we're in a sort of silly, rather childlike almost, political constitutional crisis. There is a confusion and mayhem. We've wasted the first three years uh, since the referendum. We're back at square one, and, and the British can't sort out what it is. Uh, a consensus majority in Parliament, a consensus majority in the public actually want to go to. I keep suggesting that the obvious compromise we've all got to make, and it's a big compromise for me, I'm a stay in the EU is anything alternative is dreadful in my opinion. I'm prepared to accept that we leave the European political union, all the things people fear about a super state and so on, which I, I don't agree, but there we are, let's leave the political union, and stay in the common market, the customs union and the single market. And yesterday, I nearly got the House of Commons, all factions, to agree, stay in a, mandate the government stay in a customs union. On Monday, we'll get there, I think. I mean, can't predict anything in this mad world. But I think we will. And I think, under our constitution, the government's obliged to actually only govern with the consent of the majority of the House of Commons. Three quarters of the House of Commons voted to remain. Um, and you didn't manage to get the vote through despite that. Even if you do get it through next week, 52% of the country voted to leave the European Union. What makes you think that they want to be, remain in the customs union? Well, firstly, nobody suggested for one moment changing our trade arrangements at the kind of the referendum. I don't think the public has strong views on that. Business certainly do. Uh, I mean, the, the things we're now arguing about never mentioned in the referendum. I mean, the Irish border... Uh, whether we stay in the customs union, whether we stay in the single market, 
are we going to put new barriers to trade at Dover or across the Irish, uh, the island of Ireland? And none of that was discussed at the referendum, and they're not uppermost in the minds of the public, although, of course, they realise that they matter and they have views on those things. Uh, the actual governments of the country has to be determined by a majority in Parliament. The majority regards itself as bound by the referendum. So the 52% will get their way when we leave the political union. But you can't ignore the 48%. And we don't have a kind of tyranny of the majority. I want to, at the moment, the mood is angry, polarised, furious. The political establishment's held in contempt because it can't agree. I want to bring together the 52% with the 48%, get Parliament to function properly again, compromise. That's what we need. Leave the political union, stay in the common market. Nearly got there yesterday. Might next Monday, if the House of Commons goes dotty again tomorrow and rejects this withdrawal agreement again. Why do you think or, that the British public didn't know what they were voting for? And to what extent do you and your colleagues have to accept responsibility for that? Well, I wasn't in favour of having a referendum. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I'm, not blaming, I'm not blaming them. The British, the, British, the public weren't dem didn't particularly demand a referendum on the EU. It was the political class that wanted to try and heal, improve party management by having a referendum. It was a terrible mistake. Wasn't it the because, actual if campaign, I may interrupt, but the actual, if well, I may interrupt well, there, the, if I may just interrupt yeah. there, was that not because Mr Cameron thought that he had to have a referendum because otherwise UKIP and Nigel Farage was going to make a great big UKIP-sized hole in the Conservative Party? Possibly. It wasn't the reason he gave to me when I complained about it, when I read it in the newspapers. I was a member of the Cabinet, and I, I had quite a row with him. And his, what he complained to me was to stop the party banging on about Europe up to the election. He was trying to pacify the extreme right wing, who eventually got rid of him, and they've now got rid of uh, Theresa. Uh, then, when the campaign, going back to what the campaign actually decided, I, 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 it did decide we were going to leave the European Union, the political institutions. I accept that. I didn't vote for it. And I, and I did not say I changed my opinions in the line of one opinion poll, but most MPs did. So we, 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 we are leaving. But the campaign at the time of the referendum was about all the money we'd have for the health service, which was dishonest because there was no money released for the health service, and all the millions of Turks who were coming here uh, if we didn't leave, which was absolute nonsense, total nonsense. Now, there were other things were debated, but as I've said, uh, Boris Johnson reassured everybody that our trade with Europe course, wouldn't be changed. That was, oh, that was Project Fear to suggest that. Uh, we'd have easily get an agreement to carry on as it is now. The Germans had to sell us their Mercedes. These are the words he used to give as an example. The Germans have to sell us their Mercedes. The Italians have to sell us their Prosecco. No, that's all nonsense. It'll carry on as now. And, and it was only when Theresa May, for some reason, again, playing to the, she thought, to pacify the right wing, started saying we were going to leave the single market and the customs union, that we got where we are now. But that was after the referendum. I know it's three years ago, but people forget the campaign. Both sides, the Remainers ran a ridiculous campaign, the leading figures, Osborne and Cameron, were going on about an immediate crash, house prices going up, all kinds of rubbish. The actual merits of being in the EU were not debated, and the public, I think, are largely at the moment angry and baffled by all these arguments about the Irish okay. border and so on that they were never troubled with before okay. they voted. Mr Clark, final thought just before we let you go. What do you think has to be done tomorrow in order to be able to get um, any hopes of a meaningful, meaningful vote three past your buddy the Speaker? Well, tomorrow that won't be on the agenda. Tomorrow. I still hope we'll pass the withdrawal agreement. I think all, I mean, most of the public are amazed that we're arguing about something called the Irish backstop. There's nothing wrong with the Irish backstop. The idea it's a wicked continental plot to ensnare us in their rules is really the most arrant nonsense. And I hope things have got so bad that the House of Commons finally be persuaded to vote for it. I mean, they've stabbed Theresa in the back on the basis they would vote for it. Uh, if she did give up her leadership, they could still let her down and she's still going to get the EUP. Tomorrow, 
I still hope we'll settle it the most straightforward way and get the withdrawal agreement through. Then, the viewers will be horrified to know, we will start the serious negotiations about the long-term relationships, the customs union, the single market and so on, which will take at least two or three years to get resolved. Wow. We've got to resolve them in a more sensible way than the way we've been faffing about for the last six months. Faffing about, love that. Uh, Mr Clark, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on the programme. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you.